you've just been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes or you have a loved one that's been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes or what now? My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and I'm an advanced specialist pharmacist in the NHS in the UK. I've lived with type 1 diabetes since 2001 and I'm here to tell you that it's not the end of the world. We have to remove this misconception of how difficult it is to manage diabetes and we have to speak about advancements in diabetes care and the fact that you can live a normal life. So in 2001, I noticed some different things. I noticed that I was going to the loo, to we, more often than anyone else. I was going like nine to 10 times a day. I noticed that my mouth was extremely dry. Like no matter how much water I drank, it was extremely dry. Um, and I noticed I started feeling a bit sick. I started to also notice I was losing a bit of weight and my appetite just wasn't quite there. I went to see a GP about this uh, with my mum and what they said to me was, you're probably just going through puberty and they couldn't figure out and put their finger on the fact that it's possibly diabetes. I had uh, a family relative uh, that was diabetic so my mum asked to check my blood sugar levels and my blood sugar levels were 25 millimoles per litre. And for people that know about diabetes and know about these values, that's extremely high. It's five times what you'd normally expect uh, someone to be. Um, you'd normally expect people to have uh, roughly five millimoles per litre for their blood glucose level. Take into account that there is a range here, so I don't want people to be scared if, it, if, if you're a six or 6.5, seven. Of course, those figures were alarming for me. So. We went to the hospital and that's when I got my diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. At the time, diabetes care, diabetes technology wasn't where it is today. So it was sort of worrying for everyone. And uh, what can happen when you're nine years old is I'm not re I don't really understand that diagnosis, so I'm not so worried. But the people around me looked so concerned and would repeatedly say, oh my God, what are you gonna do now? That it would make me worry for something that I actually wasn't so worried about. So they told me, you have to have injections. I was like, I hate injections. They told me, if you don't have injections, you die. So I'm like, okay, I'll have injections then. How can you live your whole life taking injections for the rest of your life? I hate injections. This is terrible advice. So if you know someone that's diabetic, do not make them more concerned than they have to be. If they're already alarmed, do not add to that. They don't need it, it doesn't help. So that's the main thing that I want to address. The second thing that I want to speak about is the fact that diabetes care has drastically changed. You now have devices like this and this. This is a Freestyle Libra. This is a Dexcom 1. These are available on the NHS in the UK and they allow you to know your blood glucose readings every five minutes. So every five minutes you can get your blood glucose readings onto your device here. I can go into my phone and I know exactly where my sugar levels are. I'm currently seven millimoles per litre. Takes me two seconds to check. And you're probably wondering what this device is. This is what I use to administer my insulin. So it tells me how many units of insulin I have on board. And when I'm going to eat some carbohydrates, I just let this know I'm gonna eat some carbohydrates and I inject for it. So that leads me on to a huge misconception for type one diabetics. Most type 1 diabetics use something called a basal bolus regimen. The basal, they take their background insulin and their bolus is their mealtime insulin. And many people go through a course called the Daphne course, which is dose adjustment for normal eating. And what that means is that within reason, if you have control of your diabetes well, you can have a flexible diet. It's not like how it used to be before. When I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, I was told, no more chocolates, no more sweets at all. Times have changed drastically. I have a fully flexible diet. I eat like a lot of people. I eat exactly the same foods as my family and I'm able to manage this. There are some things that I may adjust differently to other people. So I may group my foods in one meal rather than breaking up into snacks because I find that I can control my insulin for that one meal a lot better compared to 
breaking it up during the day. But what it means is you can have a flexible diet. You don't have to cut out all your all the foods that you love purely for this diagnosis. So this requires you to work very closely with your diabetes team and to uh, ask for all uh, the education surrounding uh, basal bolus regimens. Of course, if you're not on a basal bolus regimen, your control will be different to someone that is on a basal bolus regimen. So it's very important to discuss this with your diabetes team. But what the main thing I want to highlight is that many people living with diabetes can eat a flexible diet. And the final and most important thing is to get in touch with other people that are diabetic. Find diabetes forums. Diabetes UK has several forums where you can communicate with other people that are diabetic and also speak to them about their experiences and share your experiences and learn from each other. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please drop a comment in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Like this video and subscribe for more and I'll see you with the next one.